Welcome back to the discussion, IT Modernization, Enabling an Anywhere, Anytime Government, sponsored by Lidos on Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. My guest today is Doug Jones, Technical Core Competency Lead, IT Modernization at Lidos. I'm your moderator, John Gilroy. We you know, when I think of uh, freelancers, I think of people in L.A. and, you know, doing movie stuff and, and freelancers here in New York. But, but I think freelancers uh, are part of packages in different parts of the government. And you can almost call s- different types of contractors freelancers, mm-hmm. too. And that's difficult to uh, collaborate in that environment, and especially with mobility challenges and security. So how do you address that? It is a major challenge. Uh, I mean, parts of the market, it's, it's going to be almost impossible to when you start getting in the classified space, right? So you're very limited there. But when you look outside of it, we're already seeing large changes in terms of the amount of freelancers and I'll say just remote workers that are working anytime, anywhere. And it really comes down to changing the paradigm of security, looking at it differently, looking at it sort of a data-centric model and a role-based model. So understanding your data and how the security needs are for that data and what are different. I, I think there's some important technology that's coming and some paradigms that are changing. One uh, perfect example is Google actually put out a white paper on how, how they do their security. It's something called Beyond Corp. And what they've done with that is they actually have an agent on their device instead of VPN that interrogates the security state of that device, the antivirus, the patch level, everything. Hmm. And then they use that state of the device to dynamically determine not just can you connect to their network, but what applications, what data can you see? It's a different model. Today, most VPNs, if your device is not secure, you're just, you're off. You're in a corner. You can't connect. You can't do any work. Their model says, I'm looking at the security of you and your device and saying, well, I can let you do email. I can let you actually go fix the device, but maybe you can't get into the HR system where all the PII data is, or you can't get into our financial system, or you can't log in as a system administrator onto Google's worldwide infrastructure. So it's a different model that takes a risk-based approach and looks at the data and the access you can have and uses that to determine what you can and can't do. And I think the same applies to when you're looking at how you do collaboration of the future with that consulting group, the contracting, the freelancers, those collaborators that you're going to have is that understanding what their role is, what their security risk is, what's the state of their device, and saying, here's what data you can have access to and what you can't have access to. It's much more sophisticated. When I, when I think of the Edward Snowden adventure, it was he had access to everything or nothing. Right. <laughs> it was like the black or white. However, maybe the systems are more complex than that, and maybe there should be, well, we have no problem with Doug looking at that article, but he has, you know, it's not time or maybe next month or certain time characteristics on this. So I think that's a, the granular capability is I think is something that people don't understand. And I think Google's taking advantage of it, but I think Lighthouse is taking advantage of it too, isn't it? Yeah, that's the sort of model we're starting to try to take towards our customers is, again, it's going to that data center approach because the data is, is really what we're talking about, right? The data is what's core and that's where the risk is, right? Is it certain elements of PII data, right? Is it, you know, social security numbers? I can let you look at people's, sort of demographic information, but I can't let you match that to an individual, right? And how do you control that in a better way? Or, you know, like you said, classified data or pseudo classified data, you know, you know, official use only data. And you can see certain things, but you can't see other things, but you need to have enough data so you could do your job and accomplish your mission, but you want to lock other pieces down. And again, it's building those into our tool sets and into our collaboration capabilities and how we allow people to coordinate and collaborate across organizations. I had a recent encounter with IT modernization when my phone kind of fried, <laughs> paper, paper chipped on me, and I had to replace it. And so I think of the federal government replacing hardware as well. But this isn't just, you know, plug in a new server, baby. <laughs> it's not get a new router. It's, it's, it's way complicated. And, and in fact, may have to incorporate some of the newer rules like more granular access. That's correct. I mean, I think providing that real-time support in the federal space is one of the harder things that that companies like Lidos bring to the table is, is how do you make sure you had a secure supply chain for all the hardware? How do you make sure it's configured and locked down in the correct way? And then getting it to the right user. Because, I mean, we can't just ship a phone to a new user at a federal site. It has to go through shipping and receiving, make sure that they receive it, and then delivered, depending on the site, delivered, hand-delivered to the user, or they picked it up through internal mail. So there's different paradigms we have to account for in the federal space to make sure they're secure and that there's you know no one can get in there and insert some sort of Trojan device on it in the meantime. When uh, I look at my students, I teach at Georgetown. Look, my students, every student has a different kind of a requirement for their mobile. You know, some tablets, some have these big phones, small phones. Uh, some are you know using uh, Microsoft Surface Pros. 
So um, what are the preferences you've seen for uh, mobility users? All over the place. I mean, you see everything from a big demand now. A lot of people are pushing to bring Macs into the workplace more often. Uh, and we're starting to see a demand for choice. So, you know, everything from Windows boxes to Macs to even Chromebooks are becoming popular. A lot of people coming out of colleges now have been used to using Chromebooks. Uh, you know, simple models where it's all web-based. Uh, then you're looking, like you said, all the different mobile devices. And I think that's where, you know, the CIO offices are struggling in terms of balancing where people like shadow IT, they want to use what they want to use. They want to use the devices they're comfortable with. They can get their job done most effectively with. And then, you know, CIOs want to have standardization from a cost and from a security perspective. And we try to help our customers find that balancing act and enable the users to get what they need, but also control them in a secure way. I went to your website and I read your modernization white paper and had all kinds of very carefully laid out categories. Talked about app modernization and it came up with a phrase I haven't read before. It's called app replatforming. Wow, this is uh, it's exactly what's going on, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a concept of how do you move apps from you know an, a legacy platform onto a modern platform. And you know, o- honestly, a lot of the core software and the logic inside the applications they're going to stay the same. They're, people are using it today. They're comfortable with it. There's policy, legal policy and rules built in there that you're not going to throw away. So you don't just start from scratch and replace the entire app. You can, how do you replatform, bring it onto a modern platform so that we can leverage a lot of the investments that have already been in there, but get it off of those legacy hardware or the legacy devices that are, that are causing significant cost or security risk? Yeah, and the concept of application modernization means user-centric design, as well as this consideration to uh, legacy uh, logic and and, uh, maybe legacy usage principles that have been fought over the years and seem to work. Completely agree. I think one of the biggest changes we see when we do app modernization is focusing on that end user input area. You know, looking at the user eyes, you, the UI and user centric design. Like I said, the logic is usually sound. The back end's pretty good. It's now trying to bring it into a modern technology, taking it away from looking maybe like a Windows ninety five, Win, Windows ninety eight. You know, look to bring it to a modern user centric design in the front end. And oftentimes that's our first sort of quick win we'll do is unifying multiple systems with a single user centric design in the front end and. Enabling the users to be able to be more effective by by leveraging sort of modern uh, navigation techniques. Windows 95, that's a stroll down memory lane for all <laughs> of us, isn't it? <laughs> We're going to pause here for a short break. My guest today is Doug Jones, Technical Core Competency Lead, IT Modernization Lidos. I'm your moderator, John Gilroy, on the discussion, IT Modernization, Enabling an Anywhere, Anytime Government. Sponsored by Lidos on Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com.